Yes, hello again. Welcome back to your uh, favourite classic dirt bike TV channel here on uh, YouTube, which uh, apparently it seems to be the place to come to if you like looking at old vintage and classic dirt bikes, according to my uh, increase in subscribers. So uh, thanks again to everybody who's taken the time uh, to uh, commit to my channel and uh, subscribe. Now, we normally don't do uh, things like requests here on uh, CDB TV, but we'd, we have had a couple of messages from a few of, of my subscribers and asked if uh, we could feature a bike that I did uh, many years ago on this channel. So we're going to complete uh, that request uh, for those lucky subscribers uh, right now. So we're going to dive straight into uh, this uh, video and take a look at this uh, lovely 1989 uh, GM Star 500 uh, Michael Evolution bike. And so if you're a regular visitor to my YouTube channel, you may have already seen a version of this uh, featured bike I did uh, many years ago, although uh, as it was uh, by a request from a couple of my channel subscribers. And uh, because it's such an interesting machine, uh, we're going to give this bike another uh, look over. Now, the bike is a 1989 Michael GM Star 500, and it's uh, currently owned by Peter Maxwell. And uh, it's just one of the very nice bikes that Peter has in his collection. And uh, we will feature another one of Peter's machines uh, here in a future video on Classic uh, Dirt Bike TV. Now, the rise and the fall of the once great Michael Empire has been well documented down the years and uh, their history is made up of uh, one of unrivaled successes during the 1970s and 80s uh, to bitter infighting uh, within the Michael family and various other changes of ownership. And by the time that these GM stars came along in the late 1980s, uh, the once great Michael Empire was now owned by yet another consortium of German industrialists who uh, tried a last ditch attempt to resurrect the name uh, once again. But uh, the damage was already done uh, to Michael years before, and uh, these renamed and rebadged GM star Michaels it soon uh, faded into obscurity. Although despite some uh, lacklustre advertising and virtually no promotion of these bikes in 1989, at the end of the day, these were still very good race bikes because they had a good steel chassis and uh, modern style front and rear suspension. And of course, that absolutely bonkers 500 two-stroke water-cooled motor that was an absolute beast of an engine which uh, was more than capable of taking on the best of what the Japanese had to offer in 1989. Now, as you probably guessed, our featured bike here is uh, not a 100% original uh, machine from that year, but it's still a very fine example of uh, what one of these 500 GM stars actually looked like in the late uh, 1980s. And so as we begin with the bike's uh, chassis, which was uh, basically a tubular steel uh, frame that was uh, still relatively light considering uh, its construction uh, materials. Now the rear subframe uh, also held uh, the seat, uh, the side panels, and exhaust tailpipe hanger and it was made up of a slightly smaller diameter steel tubing which again it was relatively light but very strong and even off-road magazine bike testers who did test days on these GMs in 1989 raved about their sharp handling and their ability to change direction quickly and even commented about how they handled uh, very much like a Japanese bike of that same uh, era. But uh, just even looking at this bike sitting on the stand, it certainly has a look of a machine with poise, attitude and style. 
And so as we uh, get into the bike's motor, which is, uh, as you know, a 500cc two-stroke water-cooled reed valve engine, which, uh, as I remember, I think it had a five-speed gearbox at that time. And I'm sure that uh, for 1989, you could also have an option of a five-speed uh, close ratio gearbox or a wide ratio box, depending on whether you wanted to use this bike for motocross or enduro racing. But despite all of the infighting and bitching and general disorganization of the Maiko factory in the late 1980s, this 500cc two-stroke motor was an absolute belter of an engine uh, that on average uh, put out far more horsepower than your uh, average motocross rider could actually handle. Now, uh, as I said, uh, our featured bike here is not a fully stock 89 GM500 and uh, if my memory serves me correctly for its inaugural year in 89 these GM500s would have been fitted with a 40mm oval slide bing carburetor although it appears our featured bike uh, here seems to have a flat slide uh, key in uh, fitted in its place. Now the air for the carburetor was uh, supplied through a twin air filter that was fitted inside this plastic air box which uh, almost all motocross bikes were now using in uh, 1989. And uh, once more because this was the late 1980s these uh, two-stroke micro motors were fed their fuel uh, through a carbon fiber six petal uh, reed valve uh, block rather than of course a more uh, mundane piston port uh, type of fuel uh, fed engine but these reed valve blocks were certainly the future of fueling motocross engines as we headed into the 1990s now the motor's uh, cylinder also was uh, fitted with a nicosil lined uh, barrel and it was uh, also fitted with michael's own version of a two-stroke uh, power valve that uh, worked off exhaust pressure which uh, altered uh, the exhaust port timing just to give the motor a bit of a wider and uh, varied uh, power band. Now you may remember back in those uh, fantastic days of the 1970s and the early 80s uh, the older uh, Michael engines would have had uh, the old school primary chain uh, used to connect the engine's crank uh, to the transmission, which, uh, as you're aware, uh, could be quite troublesome and uh, chain stretching and uh, breakages were uh, quite common on the older uh, Michael bikes. Although from around 1982 to 1983, this problem it was then solved by taking those primary chains uh, out of the equation and then uh, using gears to connect the crank and transmission together as of course in our featured uh, GM here. Now in order to provide the sparks for our GM Star 500 normally it was a Motoplat CDI ignition system that was uh, utilized in these 89 Michaels, although this uh, lovely CNC machined alloy ignition cover is uh, certainly a replacement item to uh, what more than likely uh, would have been a plastic stock part in uh, 89. Now once again because Peter's uh, GM Star is not a fully original stock bike from 89, it's had a replacement exhaust uh, system bolted in and uh, in our case here it's also uh, been chrome plated just to add a little bit of bling to our particular uh, machine although I expect if uh, Peter was going to be using the bike as a fully blown uh, race machine then the chances are uh, this part uh, would have been painted uh, matte black instead and again as you can see the uh, tailpipe once more is a replacement part and this alloy unit is a straight uh, bolt-on uh, Michael replacement part from uh, DEP or uh, Derek Elwell uh, pipes. 
And so at the front end of our GM Star, we have a relatively modern pair of 40 millimeter upside down suspension uh, units. Now, I'm neither sure that these are the stock parts or uh, the forks that would have been fitted to these GMs in that year, but they certainly look like uh, they were custom made uh, to fit our Michael, but who uh, the actual manufacturer is of these suspension units, I'm not uh, really sure. But my guess would be that uh, these are probably white power or maybe even Italian uh, Marzocchi's uh, going uh, by the look of them. Now, once more, I'm pretty sure that in 1989, these GM Michaels uh, would have had these Grimeca uh, twin pot hydraulic disc brakes at the front of these machines and uh, at the back of the bike, it was just a single uh, pot unit, uh, which uh, wasn't the most powerful uh, stoppers uh, of their day, but uh, they were still very much better than the old school uh, drum brakes that were fitted to Michael uh, race bikes of the 1970s and early uh, 80s. Now once more, the GM uh, Michael's rear swing arm was uh, a pretty simple alloy box section item and uh, you can see that uh, Peter's been out here with the spit and polish and he's certainly buffed it up uh, to an almost uh, mirror-like finish. Now at the rear of our machine, a modern style single uh, rear monoshock on the tail of our GM Michael. Although uh, again, I'm uh, unsure of the actual make of the shock, but it uh, could certainly be a white power unit once again, judging uh, by that white uh, coil spring. Now the rear shock is bolted onto that alloy swing arm by way of this uh, linkage system at the bottom of the unit but nevertheless the front and rear suspension system on these bikes was still uh, pretty good for a late uh, 1980s motocrosser. Now uh, once more these 1989 Michael fuel tanks were uh, as you'd expect all made from plastic as this was uh, the late 1980s of course when all of roaders had uh, copious amounts of plastic uh, fitted on uh, to their machines but this uh, GM star fuel cell would have held around 10 litres of premix fuel because that big 500 two-stroke motor certainly liked a drink and it could swallow gas from this tank at an alarming rate when it was being uh, worked hard but the overall bike it certainly had the look uh, with those snazzy uh, GM Star uh, graphics uh, fitted uh, onto the side. And the graphics on uh, Peter's bike here are more than likely, again, uh, reproduction uh, items. Now, with regards to the comfort zone on our 89 GM, these seats were uh, a decent place to rest your backside on from time to time if you ever got the chance, of course, to take a short break uh, from wrestling uh, with that brutal 500cc uh, motor going uh, over the jumps. But uh, the seat, as you can see, uh, extended onto the tank so that the rider could then uh, throw his weight as far forward as possible just to help uh, the bike uh, make sharper turns. Now again, I'm pretty sure that uh, the bike's plastics are not uh, the original parts from that 89 year as uh, these uh, all look very fresh fitted here onto our GM because you can still source reproduction panels for these older uh, GMs if you shop around and uh, Peter's bike's uh, side panels and uh, rear and front mudguards are still uh, copies of the original uh, 89 plastics that would have been fitted at the Michael uh, factory. But uh, other plastic parts uh, like these uh, radiator scoops uh, can be uh, quite harder to source, but uh, I must admit it's great to still see them all fitted uh, onto this iconic 1980s race bike. 
Now, the controls on our uh, GM500 are all uh, brand new motocross parts, including a pair of uh, good quality rental handlebars and, of course, an engine kill switch on the left there, along with its uh, all-important uh, decompressor lever just to help you uh, kick the big 500 motor uh, into life. But again, these are all top quality items, which, uh, as you'd expect, have to be just to help you tame uh, the awesome power of that GM's uh, 500 engine. But uh, whether Peter's GM500 here is original or not, uh, I expect that no one uh, will really care because despite it not being a fully authentic uh, Michael from that 89 year, there's certainly no disputing it's still a cracking looking example of one of the last great uh, Michael racers. But when you stop to think why this bike never got the recognition it fully deserved, because these GM stars uh, weren't bad bikes because they did have a very good steel chassis and a decent quality suspension on the front and at the rear, and of course a 500 motor that would rip your arms off. So uh, when you ask the question, uh, what's not to like about this lovely uh, GM? But then again, uh, the reality of the situation was that by the time these GMs actually came onto the market, uh, the once great Michael name had already been dragged through the gutter in the courtrooms of Europe. And although this was the last attempt to resurrect the once great Maish brothers legacy, unfortunately it was all uh, too little too late and uh, the once great Michael factory that gave us bikes like the 1981 490 Michael Mega 2 was now nothing more than a long lost chapter in motocross racing history. Well, there you have it. I uh, do hope you enjoyed uh, taking another look at uh, Peter Maxwell's uh, lovely GM Star 500 uh, Michael uh, from 1989. As I said, uh, not a fully original bike from that day, but it's uh, great just to take a look at another one of these uh, GM uh, Michaels once again. As, uh, as you know, uh, these were uh, one of the very last of the Michaels uh, before uh, they vanished into obscurity. So coming up in my next video posting here on my channel, we're going to take a look at uh, a special hybrid uh, twin shocker. So uh, coming up next, we'll be uh, diving in to this uh, quite nice looking uh, 380CZ twin shock machine. Now, uh, this of course is not an original bike from way back in the 70s or 80s. This is a completely brand new built machine with a new frame and some very nice uh, trick parts uh, fitted onto it. So we'll be taking a look at uh, this bike when we all return to my next video posting here on CDB uh, TV. But of course, everybody out there, continue to watch what you're doing when you're riding those old vintage dirt bikes. And I hope to see you back here again very soon so we can talk about more of your lovely vintage iron right here on your number one and favourite classic dirt bike. TV channel.